My name is Commissioner Frank Avila, and I'm a commissioner at the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. And today the name of our show is Cutter Acacia, an opportunity for Chicago. And I have with me as my guest, Nancy McKenna. She's the program director for the American Academy of Industry. Is that correct? That is correct. And um, Nancy has her Bachelor of Science in Physics, and she minored in Studio Art. She's a, a, a lover of the water and the arts. And, and Nancy, uh, 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 what is the American Academy of Industry and the Cutter Acacia? The American Academy of Industry is a 501c3 non-for-profit formed for education. And we intend to teach the connections between the Great Lakes and water and the shipping and heavy industry and also the connection between water and us because it is a resource. It is a resource that we drink, it is a resource we recreate on, we, it is a resource for shipping. It is part of our life and it's underutilized, it's underappreciated today. Now, uh, the, um, uh the name of the show is Cutter Acacia. Correct. An opportunity for Chicago. And before the show, you were mentioning that acacia is a type of wood. Yes, it's the one we think of in terms of uh, the perfume and soaps and, and other perfumes. It is a plant from North Africa. It's a tree that was used in ancient times to build ships. Egyptian ships were often built out of acacia and cedar. And this ship is, of course, made out of steel. It is a or was a ice-breaking buoy tender, 180 foot long, and in that way it kept the sea lanes open. It allowed shipping to come to, to Chicago, actually, by keeping it free of ice and also maintaining buoys, which are um, like floating cans in the water that guide the ships, keep them from the shoals, mark where they can and can't go do, so that the ships stay in what is essentially the highways of the lakes. So, so this is um, uh, the, uh, it's a U.S. United States Coast Guard cutter, cutter Correct. acacia. And then, how did you happen? To, um, uh, did you buy it uh, uh, at an auction, or or how did you happen to acquire it? We were looking for a number of types of ships, and this one was slated to be sold, I think, to Nigeria. I'm Nigeria? not sure, Nigeria, to go into their navy, yeah. and the sale fell through. And at that point, the cutter could either go to Curtis Bay to be stripped and mothballed until the next possible opportunity to sell her or perhaps scrap her, or we had a letter on hand already at the Coast Guard asking that if she came out of service that we would like to have her. Hmm. Now, because she was slated to be sold and there wasn't a long waiting period between her ceasing to be in service, she was not stripped. She has everything on her that was on her when she was operational. Oh. Now this is significant for the ROTC units and the Sea Scouts because programming that they would do is then on real, it's real life, it's not make-believe, this is the actual equipment. It's not borrowed from somewhere, it's not fabricated, it is as it was. All the Coast Guard did was take off sensitive documents, the computers and weaponry. Uh, oh, they, they took off the weapons? Yes. Uh, so, so the Boy Scouts, can I get a chance to... No, sorry, no <laughs> shooting. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so now... Um, you you meant not, not the mission of the American Academy of Industry. What's their mission? The mission is education. Uh, education? And it's also, well, the cutter itself, of course, could have lots of different opportunities. If the buoy deck okay. is about 37 feet by almost 60 feet. It is generously sized for um, for events, even. Events? I think. Yes. And, and so by, by education, um, would you, uh, you, let's say you bring a, a, a Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts or, or some other... Uh, grade school or high school, um, would they spend a, a, a couple nights on the ship? or, or they, they could. They could? They could. Uh, we will have daytime programming, but also overnight programs. We'll be working with the individual teachers in terms of the Chicago Public Schools, but also with the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and Boys and Girls Clubs and 4-H. They have educational units that have specific goals, and we'll be working with them to meet those goals. We also work for NOAA. That's the... Um, with the weather, with yeah, weather nice buoys, yeah. right? Yeah. And we also have weather station capabilities on the boat. So oh. a lot of what she was before she was decommissioned ties in directly with the education that these groups of children are learning now, or now, could be learning. Now we do have an image up there showing uh, two Boy Scouts on, on the deck. 
Right, on the bridge. Uh, oh, on the bridge, okay. That's well, where uh, they, they drive uh, the boat, yes. Okay, yeah. Well, and, and, and the two um, uh, Boy Scouts are uh, right there, uh, uh, and, and they look familiar. Uh, are they familiar to you? Those are. Those are two of my sons. Two sons? <laughs> yes, I actually have three sons, oh, and three sons, yeah. their scout unit visited the, the Acacia. Uh, what's, what's their uh, troop number? 149. Well, 149? Correct. And they're located where? On the uh, in, south suburban? or In suburban, suburban uh, Lamont. Uh, uh, they're uh, they're in with the is that the suburban uh, council or, or the Chicago council? That's the Des Plaines Valley Council. Oh, the Des Plaines Valley Council, Correct. and and so the, uh, uh, one uh, their troop uh, came on and uh, and visited your ship. Correct. Toured the ship. They toured the ship. Oh. We can't do overnights and things until we do find a different mooring that's more publicly accessible. So 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 when when they come and tour your ship, let uh, what is the first thing you show them? And, and as you move through the ship, what do you show them as, okay. as you move along the ship? Well, when you first come on, we're on the aft part of the ship, on the deck. And that's where we have a, um, a capstan for the ropes. From there, they would walk up a set of stairs to the, uh, to the bridge, which is where the captain would steer the ship. And there is the big wheel there that they can stand behind and look. It's, very, it's a lovely view out the front of the ship yes. there onto the buoy deck. From there, they go back down they tour the captain's quarters, which are the most luxurious of the quarters, and they're, but they're not very large. They are, um, they're compact. Yeah. From there, we would go further down to the, the buoy deck level. On the buoy deck level, we have the uh, first class quarters, the officer's quarters. They would tour some of the officer's quarters. They tour the, the ward room, which is where the officers ate. We walk past and, and, and see the office, the ship's office, where all the paperwork was done. And then we come into the cruise mess. The cruise mess has four tables with, that eight people could sit at at any one time. This would also be a, a place for, where the scouts could eat a meal and that we're, where we could teach things there too. And the ward room also has a beautiful table that can be used for educational purposes. Uh, once we get to that point, you look over and you see the galley where over 120 meals were cooked every single day. 120 meals? Yes. Do you, do you cook a meal for them during the tour? Or? <laughs> no, but <laughs> I have cooked on board and, you know, different events we might be able to do that. After that, we go down to usually forward birthing, which is birthing, you think of um, the birth process, I suppose, but it actually means the sleeping quarters, and that was the original meaning of the word. So f in the birthing, you can see that th the average sailor sleeps in a cot that's actually identical to what is in the officer's quarters and even in the, in the captain's quarters. They all have the same mattress. And the, and the only difference is that the number of people in the room. The enlisted crew are sleeping in cots that are stacked two or three high, and so there's not much room, there's not much space. And all of them have essentially one locker. It doesn't matter who you are, pretty much you only have one locker for your clothes. That's where the scouts would be staying overnight if they were doing an overnighter is in the, in the birthing area. From there we can continue forward where there is a small area that the crew used to relax. There were three couches and a TV and the soda machine. Going forward from there we have a, um, a storage area, the laundry facilities, and then way up in the bow of the boat, that's the front of the boat, there is the bow thruster area and that is um, essentially another propeller that helped the boat it can even move sideways and it can also be used to create a, a negative pressure under the ice which would help in breaking the ice. The boat doesn't break the ice by going through the ice but rather by riding up onto the ice and the weight of the boat oh, cracks, cracks the ice. The ice. Oh. Right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Now um, what does a boy tender have to do with Chicago? Chicago was created by shipping. By shipping? Really yes. by shipping. The Great Lakes? The Great Lakes are what created Chicago. And a buoy tender, well she has to do both, ice breaking and buoy tending. Yes. Because once ice starts forming, the ships can't get here unless the ice is removed, cracked up so the ships can get through. And then the buoys are markers, markers that mark the shoals, they mark the harbors, they mark where the boat can and cannot go. So the depth, uh, when, when you say shoal, what does that mean? It would be uh, like sandbars, sandbars or rocks or even other ships that have sunk. So these things are marked by the buoys. Every single year the Coast Guard Cutter Acacia picked up, maintained, and put back into the water over 210 buoys all over the Great Lakes. All over the Great Lakes? Well, oh, most, oh, so, so this travels five lakes, huh? Well, it has served in, I think, three of the lakes, but the last several years she had been strictly in Lake Michigan. Lake Michigan. Right, and she served 210 buoys, even those in Chicago, during that time. 
She also was part of the air and water show. She was a spotter, so the planes knew you know where to start the maneuvers. Yeah. She's also worked on Cups tours. She's been the Christmas tree ship here in Chicago. Uh, on Cups tour. Oh, that's the no, yeah. uh, Earth Cups. Yes, yeah, uh, for the Purple veterans. Heart. Right. Uh, they're planning that again, right? The Cups. Uh, they are. Now, are they going to use your ship for the? Uh, Not okay. this year, but we're hoping that in the future we will sure, be able to do if that. Sure. That's yeah. That'd be Absolutely. an excellent. Yes. She also is a marker for the Mackinac race, or has Mackinac. been. Okay. Right, so she could probably do that again even. Now, uh, um, what replaced, uh, what, what is the Coast Guard doing now for Bowie Tender? What she did before is, has been replaced by the new Mackinac. The new, uh, new Mackinac. The old Mackinac and the Cutter Acacia both worked on Lake Michigan, yeah. and the two of them are now replaced by one Cutter. Uh, one so the, the new Cutter does not have time off to do air and water shows or yeah. the Mackinac race. So. We're hoping that in the future, the, our cutter, Acacia, can help out with that. And, and so uh, 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 the opportunity for Chicago, now, now you, you mentioned uh, uh, this is an opportunity for Chicago. Why, is it pl planning to go someplace else, uh, your, your Coast Guard cutter? Or? Well, you know, because, you know, right. the re reason why I said that, you, you mentioned that you were um, a volunteer on the submarine that was right, here. Right, the Silver Side. The Silver Side. But yet they, um, uh, they had to move the Silver Sight. Right, because they were revamping Navy Pier and we didn't have any place to go, so the, it moved to, to Michigan. Michigan. Correct. The Cutter Acacia is in a similar situation. We, we got here, we got to USX, that's the, the property there, um, US Steel property on the yeah. south side. And within months, within a couple weeks actually of our getting there, they started putting together Route 41. And that's not going to be finished until 2012. So there is no public access to the Cutter Acacia, and there wouldn't be at that lo location until 2012. Oh, my and God. And unfortunately, you know, it's a wonderful place. I mean, it's, think about it. You've got the Cutter Acacia as a buoy tender icebreaker, bringing, helping ore ships get in, helping container ships get in. Here we have this beautiful property. It would be a gateway museum to the south side. It would be really wonderful to have that museum and then the educational platform that is the boat right there. But unfortunately, because we do not have public access to there, the public cannot easily get to the cutter. Mm. And we're in the same situation then as the Silver Sides, is where can we go from here to serve the city? And I'm hoping that... Well, not to serve the Chicagoland area, northern absolutely. part of Indiana. Right, and oh. even southern uh, Michigan and sure. Wisconsin, especially with gas prices. I mean, who wants sure. to drive sure. our way for this sort of educational programming? Yeah, that's... Uh, and, and, and so, so and, and also to, uh, um, to dock that coast cutter uh, 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 must cost a fortune. Commercial rates are very expensive. And thousands and thousands. Thousands of dollars. About twenty-seven thousand dollars to be at Navy Pier. Twenty-seven thousand per what? Per month. Per month. The per dock, uh, one hundred eighty uh, foot long ship like the right. This coast cutter. Uh, right. Arcadia. And of course, a non-for-profit could never afford that kind of rate because we could no. not afford to charge anyone the rates that would be necessary for that. Sure, you would have to really charge a big dollar amount. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so what are your plans? How how can the uh, residents in Cook County or Chicagoland area help you achieve your goal of of, of keeping it here uh, to provide education for everyone? They really have to talk to their representatives. There is room on both the north and south side of Navy Pier. I understand it's a matter of maybe asking boats to shift a little bit, but I understand there is room. There's room over by Ogden Slip where the Arundel used to be. I guess there's a, a storage ship there now that could possibly be shifted uh, right off the edge of the opening of the uh, Ogden Slip. There's another slot that's very nice, like just around the corner from where the Arundel used to be that yeah. it's open. The Turning Basin has some spots. I don't know how many have bollards or a, a usable seawall, but there are areas available. And it's a matter, I guess, of the public speaking to the representatives, representatives in the city, the representatives at the state level, and I believe that's also state of Illinois property, so perhaps they're Illinois Congress people, and asking that something be done. One of these people, I'm sure, could pick up the phone and call the right person, and space could be made available. It's just a matter of people saying they care, that they really do want programming involving the water sure. and involving the history of the Great Lakes. And, and, and you know, and, and next year, in 2009, Right. We're going to celebrate the Burnham Plan. Right. And, right. and the Burnham Plan, what was planned to protect our, 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 our waterfront? Right, absolutely. Land, rent the land going up to the uh, Lake Michigan for uh, 
re recreational purposes, uh, not have any buildings on it. And here your ship would be an ideal uh, uh, location if we could find a place to dock your, your boat to provide uh, that uh, educational uh, um, tours for everyone. I agree. And I also think that with the Olympics possibly coming here, it adds to the diversity of the educational programming we're showing the world. Right now, most large cities, Baltimore, DC, I think just about all of them, honestly, have some sort of educational platform that's on the water or a museum ship of some sort. But Chicago does not. We haven't had one for a number of years. And so here it is. Here is your educational platform on the water. Here is your ship. And we just need to be able to present it to the city by gi giving her mooring space, a home where people could access her. Yes. Uh, uh, the, so how large of a mooring space would you need? About 200 feet long. About 200 feet long. About 38 feet wide, and she's water f at least 14 feet deep. Four feet deep. Four, 14 feet deep. Yes. How uh, low does it sit in, in the water? Uh? She sits about 13 feet, so 13 15 feet. would be better. But most of the spots I mentioned, the water is about 20 feet deep. About 20 feet deep. Right. Now, now this ship, uh, and and there's a uh, there's a picture of the U.S. cutter, uh, Acacia. That's where she is right now. She's That's right at USX. Now? That's how she looks today. That, and, and she's a doctor. Now, uh, how many groups do you have coming so far? Um, we have work groups on Sundays. Work groups on Sundays. And we have select people visiting. Uh, Commissioner Horton has visited, yeah. and uh, Sandy Jackson has visited, and Alderman Pope has also visited, and some other people have come to visit. But because the access is not truly public, we cannot have large groups come. We cannot have Boy Scout groups coming yet. No? No. Uh, because of the because of the concerns, this is a construction zone, and right now it's rather nice. The, they've done a very good job of keeping the ground level and flat. The road bed is um, smooth. It's not truly a road bed yet. Yes. I guess the contract has not even gone out yet to determine who's going to do the road bed. But most, of the, but there is the possibility with the large equipment around that it could be a dangerous situation. So we really cannot have the public out there, which is unfortunate because she's you know there she is. She's an opportunity that's just sitting there waiting for people to. To come and um, until we have slightly different, slightly different home for her, she's just going to sit there. Now, uh, uh, are, were there any requirements when the um, U.S. Coast Guard uh, Department gave you the uh, cutter? Uh, uh, do you have to do something with that ship within five years or four years, or, or, or uh, they just said this is here's a ship, this is yours from now on? Or was there some requirement that you have to do something within the five years? Yes, there are requirements. It is, she does have to be open within five years, I believe. Open in five years? Open, yes, and before and then. And also, doesn't say, she has to be open to allow some public on at least every week. That's why we are open, not only okay. just for work parties, for people to visit and help, because right now it's mostly the volunteers. And like I said, the visitors, the uh, aldermen have been there. And I understand some county commissioners will be visiting shortly. And uh, so we keep a log of people who have come by. That's very important. The Coast Guard wants to see some sort of proof that people are visiting and that we are working and that things are moving. Okay. Now, so you said five years. How long in that five years have you gone into it now? We received her in June of 2006. Two thousand. Oh, so it's been uh, two years now. About two years, right? Okay. And, you know, we are, I guess, on schedule for what we're supposed to be doing. Okay. But like I said, the whole purpose of this isn't just to own a boat. The purpose is education, and yeah. if we can't have the public, then we can't be doing our ed our purpose. Our purpose and so, uh, the, the equipment that you have on a boat, uh, a group will come on. You'll educate them. On you mentioned NOAA, right? That's uh, you mentioned the, the weather. The weather, we can do environmental science. Environmental Boy Scouts science. have a unit on environmental science. There's uh, American history. American history, right? That ties in with the boat because we're also talking about uh, our veterans. Yeah. And that now, ties in. now let's get back to the environment. Yes. Uh, uh, would you, do you have your kits to check the pH, the dissolved yeah. oxygen, the turbidity, uh, the yes. temperature, uh, uh, y'all, and, and so they could come out and actually come and do these type of tests. Right, and I really think that every school group and every scout group and youth group that comes onto the boat, that should be part of the programming. Sure. They will have, well, of course. Education. Right, but even just what you're saying with the water testing, I think that should, could be the very first thing. You come onto the buoy deck, and that's a 10, 15 minute job, and it's something that everyone can do. It's not an expensive test. It's pennies per child. And then you really do see, because what you're talking about there with the pH and dissolved oxygen, that's like 
when you go to the doctor's office and they take your weight, right? Your yeah. weight and your blood pressure. Yeah. And there's a really simple test that everyone does and they don't yeah. seem to mean anything. You're like, you know, it's kind of well, junky but, but almost. They're very but, important. but they are very important. Yeah. Those are the ones that they really show changes in the environment. Sure. And, 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 and that's why if, if we don't educate our kids about the water environment, I mean, uh, who's going to save the planet? Right. I mean, we have, have adults, uh, maybe we didn't do a good job, but we have to now depend on educating the kids uh, at an early age and even in, in a later age, but, but start them off properly to protect our water environment. Right, because water is it's key. I mean, the yeah. next wars they're saying are going to be over water, and something like 20% are in our Great Lakes. Yes. But unfortunately, we're well, well, you're saying that, that, that of all the surface water in the right. world, only 1% is surface water. Right. And 18% of that surface water, you know, that we right. can drink is right here in the Great Lakes. Correct, and we're already pumping out more water from the Great Lakes than, yeah. we're, than nature puts back in. So right. it looks lush and green. It looks like we have enough water for forever, but we really don't. And if we don't start thinking about that now, soon we won't have any water. Sure, sure. And, and, and that's why it's important. And I'm, I'm a firm believer in education, and we have to educate our kids. We do. And, and so that's why I think it's so important to make sure that your cutter, Correct. Ocasia, uh, stays there in Chicago stays there to educate our kids, not only in uh, taking those four uh, tests that we take, but in other type of ed educational program. You mentioned history. History. Right? And, and, and history, why is history so important? Because, well look at our, our city now, it's mostly service jobs and yet what made the city great is its industry. Yes. And if you don't start looking for jobs that pay decent wages, which often is based in industry, pretty soon everything's gone and there's no decent jobs. And if you start thinking about then the connection, well, how can we get more jobs in? You can think, well, or even just looking at the boats that come into the cities sure. now, all of them are, are based elsewhere. They're based in Holland, they're based sure. in Aruba, they're based... Sure, they, they, they come up, but they come up through our... Right. Either uh, from, uh, through uh, the Gulf of Mexico, from the south, through right. the uh, Mississippi, up the Illinois, up the Des Plaines, through the channels, into the Great Lakes. Or, or already come in through the um, um, St. Lawrence Seaway. St. Lawrence Seaway. Right, and if if our youth don't have dreams of water, dreams of being on the water, if sure. they don't realize that these are job opportunities for them, yeah. then we'll be continue giving our jobs away, and yeah. pretty soon we will no longer be the, the great naval nation we have been and that we are sure. right and, now. And, and we could set up uh, manufacturing businesses here in the Chicagoland area and ship our products throughout the world. Right. Yeah, yes. And we have large tracts of land now that are empty, uh, USX, there's yes, uh, yeah. old uh, Wisconsin steel properties on the south side, all of which are, are ripe for redevelopment into industry. So um, um, uh, what, what can the viewers do? How, how, can, uh, how can the public that's going to watch this show help you in keeping the Coast Guard uh, Cutter Acacia here in the Chicagoland area for your mission uh, to e educate us about the water environment and, and maybe uh, provide jobs uh, in, in, in the long run. Absolutely, well, in the short run because there will have to be tour guides. If there's events, there's going to be catering, which means hiring people that are local. Yeah. There's, you know, it's, it's, we're all interconnected, just like yeah. the Great Lakes are interconnected with the waterways, which are interconnected with the city and heavy yeah, industry. Yeah, yeah. So a small, even a small ent enterprise like this is interconnected with its neighborhood. Yeah. What they can do is, like I said, talk to Mr. Davis, talk to Mr. Jackson, talk to... Now who's uh, Mr. Davis? Uh, isn't Danny Davis one of our representatives? Oh yeah, a congressman. Congressman, okay, yes. So, congressman so Davis. talk to aldermen, right. state representatives, right. state senators, right. congressman, U.S. senator, and right. maybe uh, President Obama. Absolutely. That would be wonderful. In fact, yeah. I hope Mr. Obama comes <laughs> onto the Acacia. I think, I think it would be wonderful if he could, if he could visit. Okay. I, I hear this up. Uh, you're a candidate for the president. Come and visit Absolutely. the uh, Cutter Acacia. All he has to do is give me a call and <laughs> I'll unlock the door and yeah. we can see him standing on the bridge holding the wheel. Yeah. So uh, 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 you're... Um, uh, li like you said, that you're a nonprofit o organization. Yes, a 501c3. Your 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 mission is to educate the public about the water environment, about, about the water. Right. Uh, you're going to do this through your uh, uh, cutter acacia. Correct. That you uh, had uh, that you receive from the uh, U.S. Coast Guard. Yes. Okay. And 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 when they come on board, they could spend overnight. 
Yes, they can. Or spend the whole day. Right. And if they spend the whole day, how long is the whole day? It probably depends on the program we run. Yeah. We probably have programs from a couple hours to literally all day, depending on the programs. Yeah. Once again, we will be catering it to the group, so there could be a, a large group where we start with a large lecture and have breakout sessions, uh, kind of a convention style. Or it could just be a couple hours to work on a particular project, whether that be uh, water testing or uh, merit badge work or yeah. something like that. It just it depends on your group. Well, that, that's good. Now, now uh, um, uh, you're open when now? Every Sunday? Every Sunday, the volunteers and visitors. And from what time to what time? From about 11 o'clock in the morning until about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. And then uh, they could come in um, uh, during the weekdays? During the weekdays, it is not open right now. Okay. We have had it open uh, for special occasions. Yes. For example, the aldermen, they can't always make it on a Sunday. Oh, yes. You're, you're right. It's, it's, uh, well, uh, very fine. Uh, audience, you come and let's support U.S. Cutter Caucasia. Thank you very much. Okay. And thank you.